and we're back, everybody. Hello, it's your old pal, the Memphis Accelerate, and we are back at it with a very belated Yu Gi Oh! ban list of review. That's right, I have been on vacation. Yes, what well, we're back at it, time to get right back into the action. We got a whole new ban list with a whole bunch of new cards on the list, off the list, and we, we already know, of course, what's on it. Y'all know, I know. We're just gonna go over the cards that are here, and then we're gonna discuss you know, my thoughts upon it. We're gonna discuss what this list is gonna mean for the game, basically. We're gonna see where this goes for the game. So, as you can see, this new list uh, goes into effect June the 5th. So, a few more days left. This thing is gonna be all over the place. So, what has happened? Let me tell you a few things. Cyberstein, our boy, is banned again. That guy cannot catch a break. You know, he was banned for the longest time, came off for a surprisingly a, a while. He's been, he was unbanned for like four years ago, roughly, some, something like that. So Cy Cyberstein surprisingly survived off the ban list for a good long while. However, power creep in this game is absolutely absurd. And every time a new fusion is posted, then Cyberstein gets a, a boost. He gets a boost. Because any fusion that isn't, like, restricted in any way, this guy can just turbo the darn thing out. So Cyberstein really needed to get put back on the brand list. It's just the safest bet, you know, it's, it's a safer thing, you know? We, we don't need Cyberstein in this game right at the moment. Too many power fusions, branded, stuff like that. The tier limits, I'm sure, doing something. And then, I'm sure that just any fusion deck will be able to abuse Cyberstein in some way or form. So it's just better that this guy stays on the ban list. Uh, as well, what else got hit? Uh, Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow. Unfortunately, that is getting hit. I'm going to have to try and make Super Heavy Samurais before the ban list goes into effect so I can experience a little bit of that true power of theirs. But this card is just like really powerful, the Super Heavy Sams. Helps jumpstart their giant ass combos when you equip all of them. Uh, the crossbow guy, you just equip a bunch of crossbows to one of your Super Heavy Samurais. Link off into this thing, and then you get all the searches in the world. It's not even the Scarecrow's fault that he is banned. Really, they should have hit the, the crossbow. Put that thing at one or something. I don't know. Like, still usable, but not abusable, in my opinion. Because there's still other Link 1s you can use in Super Heavy Samurais to jumpstart that combo. Al Mirage immediately comes to mind. I'm sure there's a dozen other ones. There's a pedal deck, too. So, it's not like an impossible thing to do. It's just, you know, Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow is part of the archetype. He's very easy to summon in the archetype. That's why he's banned. But, it, again, it would have made more sense, I think, to hit a little bit of the crossbow. But, we'll see how Super Heavy Samurai's do without the crow first. And if we have to hit the crossbow later, so help you out, we'll do it. Uh, number 89, Diablos the Hacker of Mines is banned. Funnily enough, I called this thing on my last live stream. I got hit with two of these things at once, and I said, this card is going to get banned, or it should be banned. Or I said something to that effect. This guy's absurd, banishes your extra deck, banishes your main deck. Combine this with Kastura's, put two or more of these things on the board. You basically just destroy your opponent's main deck while also killing their extra deck at the same time. It's absolutely absurd. You know, as a one-of, in a casual sort of setting, Diablos is not that bad. But the way it's played nowadays, the decks it's played in, it's absurd. So this guy definitely deserved getting banned. He's just, he's ridiculous. Although now we have Infection Buzz King, which does similar things with the extra deck. It just doesn't do like the whole banish your opponent's main deck thing, so... You know, tit for tat, that's what we got. What else did we get? Uh, Pointer of the Red Lotus. I never really got that card that much, personally speaking. I'm sure there's like some crazy combo with this thing. Uh, but I don't know what it is, because I've never seen it done. So, well, that's that. We also have Branded Expulsion, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the trap that lets you revive the fusion materials used for fusion monsters. Which is a pretty a beefy thing. You just, you know... Fuse a branded fusion, and then you bring back the fusion materials during your opponent's turn and activate their effects. And who, what, you, how now? Yeah, so I double check that is exactly what branded expulsion does. Just brings back the fusion materials. 
It was a lot stronger back when Scythe was around. I remember that was a thing you could do, but nowadays Scythe is banned. But this card is still really good. So another decent hit. It's a bit of an odd timing for it, but I'm sure there's a good reason. There's probably going to be some more, you know, there's some more powerful cards you can use as fusion material than branded that'll make that good. Uh, Blaster's back. We're halfway back to getting into Dragon Ruler format. That's kind of neat. It's kind of cool. We just need Redox and Title to come off, and then hey, we're back in, brand, or in a Blaster and Dragon Ruler Infernos and Dragon Ruler format. And I, I don't know how well Dragon Ruler format would work nowadays, but I believe these guys are level 7, so I'm sure freaking casters will abuse them in some way, shape, or form. But regardless, you know what? I'm fine with Blaster coming back. It's another toy for the Volcanic players. You know, they got all, they got all their seven cards. Here's an eighth card for the Volcanic players. Have fun with your Blasters. You know, start doing whatever Blaster does. I don't remember what the card does. I think it just pops a card. But you go ahead. Have fun, Volcanic players. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so now we got Math Max Circular. That card is now at one as well. And that all makes a bit more sense with the Math Max. You just ditch a Math Max, summon them out. You summon another Math Max. You get a Spell Trap. It really builds up into just, like, absurd amounts of search for Math Max. It's, it's an interesting hit. I can't remember Math Max being, like, the most competent deck. They do have some nice combos, other than just summoning out Final Sigma and OTKing people. They have some nice combos with the Xyz variants. So, I, I guess this is meant to curb that a little bit or something. That's the only thing I can think of. I guess. I mean, maybe it has something to do with the Math Max Exceed being able to ditch cards from your opponent's hand in the field or whatever it did. Some, something like that. I guess. That's the only thing I can think of. It's just really easy to summon out. It is a level 4 and it doesn't lock you in, out of any sort of summoning. It just says that you can't attack with, only, with anything more than one monster that turn that you special summoned it. So, I, I guess that's part of the reason. And then you can add the trap, and then you can put the exceed into whatever you want. You have enough math makes you, there's, there's reasons to hit a card that has such easy, you know, send, set up and searching and all that good stuff. Field Presence, Circular, really good card. Good is a one -up. Uh Next, we have Cyphering Gear Gamma. I was very surprised that Gamma is suddenly, you know, on the limited list. It's kind of a weird time to do it. Consider you know, it's just like we're in a format right now where monster effects are like 80% of one's plays, maybe not quite 80, it's like 70 80 percent of your plays are monster effect based in some way, shape, or form. So, this is just stopping your opponent from having as many monster effect negates in the hand. I mean, we all have imperm, we have three imperms. This is essentially just like an effect veiler that you can't imperm or call by the grave for that matter. So that might have something to do why this card is limited all of a sudden. Again, it seems like a very odd timing for me. Uh, this doesn't really affect decks other than the fact that now they have to run more imperms. Essentially, that's all it does. Really, the only people this affects are the side frame players, and they're already like they're they're already just the stool. You just sit on them. You know, they're a bunch of trolls, but you know what? They didn't deserve to have their gamma taken away from them, okay? They already have to deal with only one Omega. Cut those boys some slack. Uh, okay, but gamma is at one that's whatever again. It's just another hand trappy card. That, that's all it really is. Uh, let's see, Deng Long, first of the Yang Zin is off the ban list. Uh, oh joy. Let's uh, give Yang Zins back to the Synchro that searches... I think it searched the counter trap that was like an Omni Negate. Oh boy, we definitely need that. <laughs> we definitely need more Omni Negates in this game. That That is for certain. You know, if there's one way to make Yu-Gi-Oh! great again, it's add more Omni Negation. That's for sure. Uh, let's see, we have Kostura Arise Heart, which is limited. Kind of an odd choice, considering why would you ever want to have two of this on the board at once? Maybe it's really good to just keep banishing your opponent's stuff like with two of the things. That's probably the reason. I mean, I've played Cash Tears. I've had a Rise Heart in my deck. I've only ever played one of the darn thing to begin with. Maybe that's just my preference. But, you know, I, I guess it's so powerful. It, you can only have one. There can be only one in your deck. That's the case. So... Alright, I'll cast your eyes hard. It's, it's fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't have any sort of 
strong feelings about it. I'm not that much of a Castro player. Uh, purely delicious in memory. Uh, what is that? Wait, what, what does that card do? Okay, so as I'm reading this card, it just makes a monster indestructible in battle. And you can summon a purely from the deck. I don't play purely. I think I saw them once when I was testing out. And they were like this obnoxious, just constantly building up giant exceed with all the spell equips or something deck. I rarely enough seen purely played to have a very strong feeling about purely delicious memory. I, I guess because it's just a straight up search for, you know, the whole archetype. It's pretty powerful in that respect. So putting it at one, it's basically like a Rota, basically. It's basically a Rota. Why it's at one, I, I guess it's just a purely thing. I don't know enough about purely to really I expound upon that, but yeah, pure, purely delicious memory is at one. Sorry, purely players. Uh, and la let's see, Naturia Sacred Tree is at one. Good. I don't like Naturios. Okay? I don't like them. I used to be okay with them back in the day, but then they added that stupid flower and that really stupid cricket. And it just did not. And I don't like it as much. They turned a deck that's about locking down into a more effective lockdown deck. I don't like it. So, tree at one is fine with me. Now the net trees have a little less searching power to them. Although, their main player is a plant, so they still have plenty of things for that. Other than that, yeah, Naturia, Sacred Tree at 1, good, good pick. Good pick in my book. Uh, next we have the Semi-Limited, which, oh lord, is now massively huge. Uh, I thought Malich, <laughs> Malich has friends now. Uh, Herald of the Orange Light is Semi-Limited. whoop de doo I, I guess that's another thing for, um, wait a minute. So, Gamma's at one, but this thing's... At, well, this requires actual, like, discard. You have you have to get rid of a fairy in your hand. So, it makes more sense that this thing is more legal, but that's still kind of weird to me, but okay. Pair of the orange light, too. Whatever. Less Gamma, more of this thing. Let, let's just all start playing Herald of Ultimate in this again. Uh, Caster a Unicorn is at two. <laughs> I mean, I... I, I kind of like Unicorn being three because I can search the spells. It lets me search the spell that gives me extra summons and stuff. That's probably why this is semi-limited. It seems kind of a shallow hit. Kind of a shallow hit, honestly. If you were going to hit Cash or Unicorn, I don't know if semi-limited really does that much to the deck. I mean, you just run three of the field spells that's searching Cash or Unicorn anyway. So semi just seems like meh nah to me. Uh, let's see, Lightning Storm's at two, but... Why I couldn't begin to tell you. Uh, the Runic Fountain is semi-limited. That does nothing. It is essentially nothing. What what does that do to stop Runics? They have a searcher in Runics. There's terraforming. There's freaking freaking set rotation. There is metaverse. There is freaking planet pathfinder for Christ's sake. What, what, what does that do to Runics, exactly? That doesn't do anything. That does nothing. It's, it's such a terrible hit. I, I despise Runics. And this is what they do. Just a slap on... That's not even a slap on the wrist. That's like a wagging your finger at them. Oh, okay. But yeah, Runic Fountain 2, whatever. Uh, Sky Striker Mobilize engages at 2, which is pretty beefy. I know this new Sky Striker support, which is why this card is now at two and that's fine i guess i mean i don't have that big of a i don't you know i'm, I'm okay with sky strikers getting a little bit more of their old power back i'm sure if they start abusing it again they will get hit again as they have been hit repeatedly if it ain't engaged it's uh the red one whose name for some reason escapes me sky striker the red one, yes. One, you know, that's going to get hit, or this is going to get hit again. One way or another, we'll get to enjoy Sky Strikers just about at full power, just shy of it for a little while. We'll see where it goes. I'm fine with it. I'm good with that. A uh, Sprite Starter at uh, two. Wow. Is that is that uh, Sprite? I got to look up some of these cards that I don't remember. 
Uh, summon a sprite from the deck, lose eight uh, life equal to its attack for this turn. Uh, so yeah, this card's like really good in sprites. I guess we're just continuing to bully the sprite players. I mean, elf is already banned. I don't know what putting this to two does. I mean, it's just straight up a summon any member of the archetype from the deck. You lose a few life points, but who the heck cares? So, a two... I, I guess this is more of a warning than anything else. So, meh. Alright, but last but certainly not least, we have everything that is off the list entirely. Uh, Steam the Cloak is uh, off the list. Okay, good, good for Blackwing players. I don't think you really care about Steam anymore. But if you do then good for you. You can run more than one copy of the darn thing. Uh, Genex Ally Birdman is off the list. That's an interesting one. That guy's been... He's been up there for a while. So, yeah, now, now you can have all the bird... Bounce your stuff back to your hand. Get a Birdman. Get your cards back to your hand. Just use them all over again. Go ahead. Uh, Blaze Phoenix OTK the heck out of people. Go right ahead. Uh, some Sarah Lotus is off the ban list. I forget why it was on the ban list to begin with, because it's been so long, so I'm going to ignore that. Uh, Spiral Quick Fix is at three! Now, if only we had Master Plan and it would matter, but we don't, so, okay. The, the boy is out of his little garage. He's here to play with all the boys again. It's, it's cool. Fine, sure. Uh, Lyrilis Crusadal Starling is off the list. Why it was on the list in the first place, I don't know. Uh, what was semi-limiting it doing? Nothing. What? Why? I don't know. But they, there you go. Recital Starling did nothing at semi, so they just took it right back off. Go right ahead. That didn't. That didn't change anything. Uh, Draco's face off. That <laughs> I'm looking up some of these cards because I don't play every one of them. And let's see. Draco face off. That is. Let's see, opponent picks one, puts it in a pendulum zone, and the other one gets summoned. Or, yeah, oh wait, you can put in the pendulum zone or special summon, add the other to the X deck face up. I mean, that's cool and all, but like, who plays Draco Slayers or Drac Overlords anyway? I mean, that's cool for like, encouraging people to play new stuff, or I should say old stuff in the new format, so I'm okay with that, I guess. It's not the worst thing in the world. So, sure, why not? Draco face off, you're fine. And last but certainly not least is Sky Striker's multi roll being at three now. Again, this is all because of Sky Striker's getting all the new support, which is cool and all. Do you ever really play more than one of this anyway? Maybe, I mean, this is not. It's not limited the like the second effect to get back your cards, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, you could theoretically have two of this on the board and get back just as many of... Well, you'll get three pretty much every time. Back your spells every turn. Keep reusing them, <laughs> damn Widow Anchors. But, is it really worth it? I suppose you could have the card as a two of in here just to make it more consistent. Would you really always want the thing at three? Maybe. We'll see. But yeah, this is definitely just another thing Sky Strikers are getting back to celebrate all the new cards that they will use and ignore the rest of the new cards that Sky Strikers got. Like the, the old man and all the other main deck mods. There's a whole bunch of main deck Sky Strikers that nobody plays. Nobody plays them. But we get more spells back, so that that's what matters. Alright, but yes, that everybody is the June the 5th ban list. It was an interesting ban list. Definitely got some decent hits here and there. I don't know how much this is going to shake up the game. It's, I mean, yeah, cash series are really feeling that unicorn at two. Yeah, they're, they're really feeling that one so hard. So hard. And a couple hits here and there that me, I don't get as much because I have not played against Purely's all that often. Uh, I have not played against um, Math Max too often. I've played them. I just haven't played against them so much, but it's it's an interesting list. We'll see what this does to shake up the game, if anything at all. Definitely going to be looking forward to a whole lot of Sky Striker players just flooding everywhere. There's going to be Sky Striker players everywhere, and that's okay. So, thank you guys for watching this here vid. Let me know in the comments what you think of this ban list. Do you think that Konami did it 
justice? Did they get okay? Is there something they just blaringly missed that I'm not thinking of right now because I'm just not thinking of it right now? And do you think we're gonna get another Dragon Ruler unbanned? And if so, who is it gonna be? So, let me know in the comments. Maybe hit the like button while you're at it because you're gonna be down there anyway. Your boy Memphis signing out. I'm gonna see you guys soon. I gotta get to work on Super Heavy Thamorize to get some of them out right before the ban list destroys them.